What's up everyone? Alex Boylan here, co-founder of Dream Jobbing. I'm so excited to have this legend with us for five questions with Mark Steinus, everyone. Entertainment Tonight host, host of host and, uh, Home and Family, mm -hmm. three-time Emmy Award winner. Thank you for being here. You're cutting into my 15 minutes. You know that, you know that right? <laughs> so we're down to 14 minutes. All right, sorry. Okay. I'll start. I'll start uh... If you hear barking, by the way, that's my wife's dog barking upstairs. Okay, she wants yeah. to be in this as well. <laughs> it happens. So thank you for being here and sure. diving into you know, how you got to where you got to in your career. Sure. Um, so I guess the first question is, you know, where was the, you know, you grew up in Iowa. Iowa, right? Dubuque, Iowa, yeah. Where was your passion for being, you know, I want to be a journalist and a TV host. Gosh, I don't, you know, the, the passion was, yeah, it's weird because you look back on it and you kind of go, were those the early signs? But I remember as a kid, I loved playing records. Yeah. I played DJ. Don't know why that was just one of those things. Now, was that, does that mean that that's what I wanted to do? I, love, I had no idea. I just loved music. But it ended up kind of going down this road where um, I found myself attracted to photography. Mm -hmm. And when I got to college, they did away with the film classes and they brought in videotape. So I thought, oh, videotape. So I went into the videotape area, which then sort of naturally led to internships at the local TV station. Uh -huh. And it was there that actually two people, I still, I'm still a guy who prefers to be behind the scenes, mm -hmm. but there were two people, Liz Mathis and Ron Steele, the two main anchors there. I had other people that influenced me, but they're my two mentors who kept saying, no, 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 you go in the front, I'll film. I'm like, no, 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 I'm back here, I'm good. <laughs> really? They encouraged, they saw something in me I didn't wow. see in myself. And when that happened, it took a lot out of me to stand in front of that camera and begin, but that was the early process. And I used to, by the way, just fun story, I would wait till the news was over with and everybody was out of the news station except the main guy in the engineering. And I would take a mannequin, set it in the chair, in the sports chair. I would sit there, put on my suit and tie, roll the camera over, set it up, lock it down, do the whole thing, take the mannequin, throw it out, sit there, put the microphone on and practice. And he would record it and I would critique myself. So, so was it that that moment where you were like, you know what, I want to do this for the rest of my life? I can make a career out of this? Yeah, it was really like, I got to try this. I mean, some, when people see something, people you admire, respect so much, see something in you, mm -hmm. you want to listen to that. Because they, I had a whole bunch of garbage in front of me, like insecurities, I'm not good enough, I'll never do this. I really had no mentoring. My parents were farmers who worked at John Deere. There was nobody in my life that really I could look up to personally and connect to. So these were two individuals that I grew up watching on television. And when they said, you got something, um, I, I had to believe them. And one thing, one piece of advice they gave me when I left and made my first jump into my first real job in Springfield, Missouri was stay who you are because the person who you are right now, that down to earth, Iowa kid, good morals, values, ethics, got your compass pointing in the right direction is what's going to keep you on the path. And it's hard because, as you know, you get into this crazy business in this town and it wants to push and pull and steer you in other directions. And I just hung on tight to those morals yeah. that I had for so long. So that's kind of, you know, be true to yourself. Yeah, it's, it's such great advice. Um, a question, I mean, it's interesting because you were born and raised in Iowa, right? Mm -hmm. And then you were with a lot of small, you know, small, you know, media stations, right, growing up. Was there a couple moves or is there... What took it from there to all of a sudden, I am the host of entertainment tonight. <laughs> this, is a, this is the advice I got. So they said, they go, look, you can get to wherever you want to go back then in five moves. Plan your career in five really? moves. You may start in Waterloo, Iowa, then jump to Springfield, Missouri. Then you may go to Little Rock, Arkansas. Then whoop, you're up to Dallas or Denver and then L.A. I went a different route. Uh, I went from Waterloo, Iowa, behind the scenes to on camera in Springfield, Missouri to L.A. I did an 80 market jump and I soiled myself when that happened. <laughs> I didn't know I drove into this town, everything, even the plants were different. I could not believe that I was here doing what I was doing. The key, the turnkey thing for me was this, and this is what I will let everybody know is you have to know what makes you special. What helps you stand out? Remember back then there were no reality TV shows mm -hmm. that launched so many careers for people, bachelors, bachelorettes, all that stuff. We talked about Jeff. Who, yeah. Um, Big brother, that, Jeff Schroeder, Schroeder, yeah. yeah, Big Brother. Mine was a fluke story that Entertainment Tonight ran on me because I looked like Tom Cruise. <laughs> and I was at the 1980 Republican National Convention, <laughs> really? and people thought I was him. 
no, no kidding. I have had this my whole life ever since yeah. The Outsiders. But in Dubuque, Iowa, people are like, well, we know you're not Tom Cruise, but you kind of look like him. But when I got into that environment, people made the, the leap. So I was asked to flip bottles from cocktail. I was asked what it was like to fly fighter jets by <laughs> yeah. congressmen who yeah. actually did. And the thing is, know that I lied. I'm sorry, congressman, <laughs> um, that I lied to. And uh, I signed his Tom Cruise's name on a few napkins mm -hmm. back in the day. But it was because of that sort of hook got me three job offers. Wow. It was in Springfield, Missouri is the one I took Bakersfield and then in Charleston, South Carolina. All came calling after that aired. Wow. Fascinating. So yeah. for especially for our younger students, I wanna I, I'm going off topic of what we talked I said I was gonna ask you, but when should a younger person, someone is in Iowa or someone's mm -hmm. out there, making that decision to come to LA, what's your advice on that? Because we get it a lot. People say, yeah. I need to be in LA or in New York. But you know, you gotta start somewhere, gotta go through that journey, and then I'd love to hear your thoughts on that. It's a tough question, so, right? Sorry. Well, it is and it isn't because today we are so connected. You mm -hmm. see, back then it was different. It was broadcast. Now people can become famous in Austin, Texas, if they're on the right platform, if they are sitting in their really cool booth and they're vlogging and they're doing something that's really amazing. Um, the internet makes it, it yeah. doesn't mean LA is the place. Now, if you're trying to host a show, New York or LA is where a lot of people are. You're going to get guests and things like that. But if you're doing something really, look at the pioneer woman. I mean, she's an amazing cook, chef, woman that has her own thing going on, and she lives out on a farm in the middle of nowhere. But it's it just depends on what you're after. Don't come to L.A. to just throw your money away and hope you're going to have a dream come true, because that's just not the way it's going to be. And uh, let me say this, somebody's like, i got to get an agent. How do I get an agent? An agent will find you when you just do your thing, because they're, in my opinion, agents will find somebody who they can go, I can make money off of that person. But if you're just sitting back waiting for an agent to discover yeah. you, it ain't gonna happen. Yeah, that's interesting. I, 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 I'm gonna say it, but like literally, I mean, I've been rep by big agencies and, mm -hmm. and, and had you know nothing like your career, but if whether it was production or some of the hosting stuff I used to do, and I always said like 99.9% .9 of the projects I was able to do, I created for myself. Yourself. Yeah. Same, same here, yeah. same here. I, did, I host the Rose Parade. The biggest event yeah. ever on the largest platform ever, KTLA. That opportunity came to me while I was hosting Home and Family in a commercial break. Really? And Don um, Corsini caught my phone ring and I looked up and I go, he's the general manager. And, and I'm like, Corsini, why is he? Hey, Don, what's going on? It's Dinas, where are you going? I go, well, we're kind of tired. Hey, what's going on? Hey, I want to chat a minute about something. I go, well, you got about 90 seconds. What's up? I'm in a commercial. He goes, oh, well, I'll get it to the point. Do you want to host the Rose Parade? And I'm like, yeah, sure. Can I call you back? They're going three, two. <laughs> That's, awesome. That's, how that yeah. That's how that happened. That is how that happened. Nobody was out campaigning, doing things. It's just your body of work represents. And you are always, yeah. whatever, whatever you post, whatever you write stays out there. Mm -hmm. Whatever you share on social media, you are creating a platform, a profile of who you are. Mm -hmm. Don't ever, I just had that conversation. Look at the Kevin Harnett, we just had with him at the, yeah. at the Oscars. Um, our Heisman Trophy winner um, uh, from Oklahoma tweeted out some stuff when he was 14, 15 years old, yeah. came back to bite him Yeah, it's the stuff you know? sticks, for yeah. sure. So always keep that in mind if you want to be a host. Yeah, that is, that's uh, awesome advice. Um, so final question, this is coming mm. from a student from, he's a freshman at Broward, uh, Broward College in Florida. He was with the Jags for America, Jobs for Florida's graduate program. And his question is, mm. how do you make it through when you're having a bad day? When everything's going wrong, uh, how do you keep going? <laughs> oh my gosh, boy, I've had many. <laughs> well, you always have to know that there's a tomorrow. The sun will come out tomorrow. <laughs> this is why I don't have a job on Broadway tomorrow. <laughs> Another thing, I'm gonna go back to a reference. I had gone through Groundlings Improv School, which is like Second City for people who don't know that. And I also studied a Meisner school for five years, which was acting, alongside of doing the other things once I got to LA. Mm -hmm. And my acting teacher once said this. He said, sit back, watch your life as if it's a movie. And you're the star of that movie. So now you're sitting there and you're watching the star and that star gets knocked down. What do you want him to do? Do you want him to feel sorry for himself? Do you want him to just sit there and cry? Or do you want him to get up and go, yeah. Pull your boots up and keep on going. And that's the thought that comes to my mind. Whatever knocks me down is not failure. It's just, a, it's a learning waiting to be discovered. Something happened that I didn't anticipate 
So I don't see it as a failure. I see it as an opportunity to learn something. That's awesome. Awesome yes. advice. Five questions. Mark's nice. Thank right. you for doing that. Where do that, I send man? the invoice to? Um, dream jobbing. Dream jobbing. <laughs> okay. Dream jobbing. Tell Lisa. Send send Lisa don't Lisa. ever <laughs> give your stuff away from free. <laughs> ever. Just charge. <laughs> Thank, you. Thank you for doing this. Man. Do I appreciate Absolutely. it. Absolutely. Good luck, guys. All right. Dude, that was awesome. Good.